This is Tim. I'm Lily. And this is Critiquing Comics. Welcome to Critiquing Comics. This is Tim with Mulele in Tokyo on the newly messed up Skype update. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we're recording this just after kind of a heavy week of comics shows in Tokyo. <laughs> Kaigai Manga Festa and two days later, Cat. Yeah. Um, how, how, you know, you tabled at both of them. Uh, you survived it okay? Um, it was okay. Actually, interestingly, um, Kaiga Manga Fest, I had uh, an assistant. My girlfriend was there, and uh, she was helping me all day. Um, the second one, I had no assistant and um, missed a few people uh, who wanted to say hello, apparently. Mm. Um, but um, they were both kind of fun, although um, Cat uh, Comic Art Tokyo was much more difficult uh, number one for not having an assistant, but also number two, the night before I went drinking and, um, yeah, it kind of wrecked me. I hadn't drank that much in a while. And I ran into this British guy in Shinjuku, never met him before, just started drinking together. And he's one of those guys like, ah, oh, come on, mate, just take the taxi home. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I dragged myself in, um, uh, and a lot of people were like, man, you look, you look rough but mm, mm. i made it i was okay by by start time so okay that's good um yeah. yeah i was i was just not feeling it on cat day yeah um, you're looking a little bit more like okay let me just get through this <laughs> yeah well i was dealing with that cold that i had had all the second half of the week mm. um but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was the room was mostly people that I'd talked to at Kai Guy, or, at best, people that um, I've had on the podcast at shows before, mm -hmm. pretty much everybody. Um, so the main things that I did was I got my Brian Lee O'Malley interview in, mm, nice. um, which uh, people will be hearing on Deconstructing Comics shortly, um, and... I made a video of the um, the workshop on Resograph mm. that uh, Natalie and Graham and Ryan did. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're recording this, I don't have that up yet, but I'm planning to pretty soon um, once I get through all the Kai Guy editing. Right. <laughs> Can't do it all at once. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking I might approach the shows differently next year, or I might just, uh, subjugate podcast coverage to tabling. I, I need to move out these machi guy books <laughs> that mm -hmm. I've got here. Um, and I, I was sort of tempted to try to do both at Kai Guy this year. And then I just kind of messed around and didn't get the deadline for a table. So, uh. Would you uh, want to specifically table at Kai Guy or or in the in the bigger uh, Comitia venue side well, of it? I've done I've done Comitia a couple of times uh -huh. and did okay. Hmm. Um, I'm actually sort of curious to see how the books would sell at Kai Guy. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking that I might get a better audience there because you know you go to my, I've got these English study materials and. There aren't all that many people who come to Comitia who are interested in English study materials. Yeah. Where I think for, you know, an international comics festival where, you know, a lot of the tablers don't speak Japanese, um, I think Japanese who come to that are probably more interested in reading stuff in English and, and studying English. So it seems like a better target audience for me. You've never had a table at Kai Guy? No. Okay. As no. far as sales of my comics go, um, it's about, well, it's, it's certainly much friendlier at uh, Kai Guy. 
And I don't get the occasional weirdo who walks up and says, oh, you're a foreigner making comics in Japan? Get out. It's like that kind of stuff isn't too appreciated. But um, mm -hmm. uh, so it's definitely a friendlier Kai guy. But sales wise, it, it's not that much different, mm. um, or at least for, for my comics. Uh, I have no idea with your work and how that would uh, go through. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I would be curious to uh, see how it goes. Yeah, I'd really like to, by next year to have gotten an, another publication made, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, well, when you say publication, you mean like uh, another educational book, or are we talking a comic here? Um, I'm not sure. Um, possibly an, another Machi Guy book, but... Uh, it de depends on what I decide I'm in the mood to do once I can make enough time to do it. Well, you know, about 16 pages of story will make a comic these days. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't have to be gargantuan. It's just in my head it has to be gargantuan. <laughs> well, chapter one. Chapter one. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, this time we're talking about a Brief History of Feminism, mm. uh, which is a, a book, uh, so originally published in German, uh, drawn by an artist who goes by the name Patu, and written by, if I pronounce this correctly, Antje Schrupp, uh, who, uh, on, on the MIT press, uh, press release, it says she is a journalist and political scientist. Um, and yeah, so it's been translated into English by Sophie Lewis and uh, coming out from MIT Press. Um, so we got a PDF of it from them. Mm. Um, and so it's, it, is it is definitely a brief history. It lives up to its name. It's like 80 pages. Yeah. I mean, the, well, totally 88, but there's some you know, like lowercase Roman numeral numbered pages at the beginning that are just kind of a preface. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it just kind of r runs through all the high points of, you know, the highlights of the history of feminism throughout, you know, the history of the world, basically. Um, and I didn't quite get it finished. You know, this is critiquing comics, so we read at least 30 pages. I got to page 44. Mm. Um not for lack of interest, just that I was swamped. Uh, I'm, I'm the same, actually. Um, I got to page 31. Okay. Uh, but I, it is it is um, a kind of um, interesting read. It, it, it there's nothing that is slow, and there's there's a fair amount of tongue in cheek humor here, mm -hmm. um, which I really appreciated for such a heavy topic. Yeah, yeah, it it is done in a humorous way. Um, but yeah, the, and oh, I picked up a lot that I didn't know here, but you know, it's, you know, history tends to be, well, up until recently anyway, by men about men. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff about what the women were doing at that time doesn't tend to make it into your average mm -hmm. history, history textbook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of that was, uh, new to me. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned before we started recording, I had sort of a philosophical question. Mm. Is this a comic? Yeah, I had the same question. Um, now, in my mind, a comic is, um, would be two or more panels that, that create a, 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 um, uh, uh, a scene, a, a, uh, a movement, uh, an action. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, we have that here. There are a couple of pages that have that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's an illustration with a caption, with some comic aspects like word balloons. But there's mm -hmm. no actual... Um, uh, it's not really panel-to-panel -panel storytelling exactly. Yeah. Well... It's it's like each. I mean, I've seen other books like this, like uh, Fred Von Lente's uh, comic book history of comics, uh -huh. uh, where like each 
panel is sort of a scene. So, I mean, if you think of it in Scott McCloud terms, he talks about aspect to aspect or uh, I don't, I didn't get around to looking it up. I don't, there are, you know, various types of comic storytelling. Mm. This is kind of vignette to vignette. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe. Um, So, I mean, it's sequential. So, in that sense, I guess it's a comic, but I mean, the artist doesn't really need to have skill in panel-to-panel storytelling. Just they Mm -hmm. need to sort of tell a little story in each picture. Right. But in that way, it'd be more like it's more like illustration than it is comics. Okay, but if you go with that, then is Dennis the Menace uh, comics or not? Um. The daily Dennis the Menace. I mean, by by McLeod's definition, no, because he he <laughs> says that one panel com one panel cartoons are not comics. Then for the most part, this isn't either, and that that was my point. Yeah, but but um, I I think to dismiss it solely on that is kind of doing a disservice to both the material and the reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think this is something that's uh, that a comic book reader would be able to engage with. It would be a little bit wordy. It was wordy for me, but um, once you start getting into the material and, and the sense of humor of, of the writer, um, it does kind of flow easily. Mm-hmm. But you're right. If we're going to go by, by kind of traditional standards of comics, then it, it doesn't quite adhere to them so much. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more of a comic than Dennis the Menace because this, it's not just one picture. It's a series of pictures. True. So in that way, it's a comic. It's just that each, each picture is with different, you know, a different time and place and maybe different people. Yeah. Um, well, and I'm looking at page forty-five, though. Like the the last three panels on that are the same person talking to us. So, hmm. I mean, it's not really a story happening; it's narration. But yeah, um, it's sequential. So, I mean, it's just barely comics, I guess you could say. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not like action or something. Mm, um. Mm. But yeah, um, well, let's see what else can we say about this. the The art is, hmm, it's not the most fantastically beautiful art I've ever seen, but it gets all the points across. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's better than I could do. Um, I don't. Well, what, what did you think of it? I I thought the the art was was fine. It got its message across fairly simply. It didn't need to be really uh heavy mm-hmm. graphically or or in in detail but it gives you a sense of the the fashion of the time to kind of set it in a kind of context and it it um is fairly subtle in the way it, it gradually builds up to from from uh rome roman era to uh modern day and I, I thought that was that was done well. Um, <clears throat> I I don't have any problems with the way uh, they uh, the artist draws. I think all of it is of a style, mm-hmm. and the style is fairly um, well reasoned, and the caricatures are pretty good. Um, I, I, it's not always that I can, uh, say, oh, that's so-and-so, but, um, for the most part, once the person is identified from picture to picture, they are consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that, that was actually fine artistically. Yeah. Hmm. However, Hmm. I have some other points. Okay. The lettering. Hmm, okay. Sometimes the lettering is a little bit off because the lettering here was done by machine or by computer. Yeah. And the um, the the art was done by hand. 
And so there are some places where it doesn't quite gel. And some places where the translation, I guess the, the translation is just too much. There's too much, too much word for the space. And, um, a kind of, you kind of see every once in a while a word bumping into uh, a word balloon border, or um, you see there's a crooked line. Mm -hmm. The box is drawn crookedly, but the text is put in straight, so it just doesn't quite flow right. Yeah. And that's just more on, on a design sense kind of thing. Um, I think the, the lettering could have been a little bit tighter. Um, maybe the space in between the lines doesn't need to be so wide on some of these. Also, um, using the font that they used, what did they use? They actually gave the font credits, which I found kind of interesting. <laughs> um, oh, here, I found it. Yeah. Um, oh. Roman numeral IV. This book was set in Myriad Pro and Adobe Garamond Pro. Yeah, by exactly. the MIT Press. Yeah. So, so using... Those two fonts, not necessary. Use something else. Um, you can use that stuff for the the introduction, um, but for the comic itself, it 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 doesn't quite work. Yeah, they're not really comics friendly fonts. Not not really, not really. And it, it actually adds to the feeling of me reading a book with pictures rather than. A comic, yes, um, but just that, and it doesn't quite gel with the art style. So, mm -hmm. a different choice of font. Mm. Yeah, good point. But yeah, I mean, there are a few little glitches like that, but but overall, I would recommend it. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing that I found most interesting was just how ignorant I am about the um, subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I, I'm ashamed to say it, but all I know is what um, my good friend Rush Limbaugh says. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, joking about that asshole aside, um, I uh, – feel that uh, I would benefit greatly from reading more of this book. So I will continue to read it mm. after the podcast. But um, if you're going to use this as a primer uh, for people like me, um, I don't think uh, it would be a bad idea. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, one thing... One of several things, I can't remember the other ones right now, but I was reading just before we got started mm -hmm. that really popped out at me. It talks about, well, it hadn't really dawned on me that this would have happened, although it sort of did. But, um, you know, after the Civil War in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, black men got the vote, yeah. but... But no women had the vote yet. Yeah. And so, the, of course, women were pretty angry about that. And that seems to have, you know, energized the suff women's suffrage movement. Although, of course, it still took decades before American women of any race had the vote. Mm. Um, yeah. It lists, uh, like, when, like, when the women got the vote in a bunch of different countries, mostly European countries, uh, page 40. Mm -hmm. Switzerland. Women in Switzerland couldn't vote until 1971. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty crazy. I did not know that. <laughs> in, in Australia, they got the vote in 1902. Mm. America was 1920, mm. but Switzerland didn't have it until 71. Well, um, as I understand it, there were certain states in the U.S. where people of different races could not marry each other until 1974. So, mm -hmm. which means basically that m my parents' union and therefore my birth was illegal in those states. Mm -hmm. um, and being a man from the states, yeah, that, that's kind of weird. 
Um, of course, it was legal in, in the state where I was born and the state where I grew up, but still. Mm -hmm. Switzerland and this thing seems a little bit, hmm, a little bit late, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so um, this was a little unconventional for critiquing comics, a uh, book being published by MIT Press. Uh, but, uh, yeah, generally we talk about... Uh, people, listeners who are making a webcomic or uh, they're selling zines at a convention or something. Mm. Um, so uh, anyone out there, if you'd like us to critique your comic, you can send it to us, either a PDF file or a link to your comic on the web. Send it to mail at deconstructingcomics.com and we'll read at least 30 pages and critique it on the show. Is that M-A-L-E? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be appropriate for this particular book, but no, it's M A I L. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, we're, our our email address is mail dominated, but <laughs> not not that kind of mail. Mm. Although our podcast is is more mail dominated than I might necessarily like it to be. Yeah, uh, well, I I have to admit I feel a little bit weird about uh, being two guys critiquing a, a book on feminism, <laughs> um, like. We're, we're, we're lacking a certain perspective here, but, um, right. Well, and yeah, that actually came up at Kai guy. Mm. Um, I, well, this will come up. Well, people will have heard it by the time this comes out, um, in, uh, the first of the Kai guy episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I talked Brazilian couple. Well, he's actually part German uh -huh. and, and they were a cat too. Um, but uh, I interviewed them at Kai Guy, and it turned out that, that they were Deconstructing Comics listeners. Oh, I see. Um, and they live here in Tokyo. Mm. Um, and I got a chance to talk with her, um, just kind of get, getting some podcast feedback from her. Mm. Um, and uh, who was it? Uh, I think it was Emmett and John, a couple of the other uh, sort of occasional contributors to the podcast. Uh, had done an episode about Wonder Woman, uh, mm. not the movie, but sort of the history of the character, right? Um, that came out a few months ago, and uh, sh she said she kind of wished that that episode had had a woman among the people discussing Wonder Woman. Um, and that opinion, I'm sure, would go double for this episode, <laughs> talking about. A book on fem on the history of feminism. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Actually, um, I met them at CAT mm -hmm. and um, uh, told them that you know, since we're all in Tokyo, we should go for a drink sometime mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in December. So, uh, of course, Tim, you'll be there, right? If I can fit it in my into my schedule, we can talk about that off podcast. But sure, sure. Um, also, we've got three books by them to review coming up, so a little bit of a spoiler, but. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of other books. I I, I actually took money to Kai Guy this year, and I, I bought a pile of books. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got about 20 books of my own um, that I want to kind of dig in with you, dig into with you. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, sometime this month, hopefully, it'll all work out. Yeah. Okay. So, until uh, next time, this is Tim. I'm Malele. And thanks for listening to Critiquing Comics.